The Asus ROG Keras might have been one of the most underrated mice to ever exist. It was a mouse that had features that most would love to have today. Unfortunately, the mouse pretty much flew under the radar. Fast forward to today and Asus ROG have revived the Keras with the number two, with features that could potentially make this one of the best ergonomic mice. With incredibly stiff competition from manufacturers both big and small, they really need to go all out to make this mouse stand out but have they? There is some make or break stuff with this mouse, which might mean that it could end up in the bin for some people. This also features some significant changes from the last Asus ROG mouse that I reviewed last year, the Harp Ace Aim Lab edition. One of which is that the Aim Labs collaboration is now gone. A good thing because it did nothing really. It also doesn't feature the incredible feature from the first Keras, but more on that a bit later. First though, there's been a performance upgrade from the original version and from the Harp Ace, with the DPI number reaching up to an incredible 42,000 DPI. 10,000 more DPI than the Superlight 2. This is currently the highest DPI available on the market, which means literally nothing. However, Asus ROG has confidently said that with their polling rate booster, they deliver less click latency than the competition. The numbers that they provided are like 0.2 milliseconds, but it's something that is technically better. They go on to say that the mouse also has less DPI deviation, which is also something that provides an actual benefit as this will ensure every movement on the mouse is as consistent as possible. It's hard for me to really test these claims because of, well, my limited intelligence so we will have to wait for someone smarter to tell us all what to think. The Keras 2 also supports increased polling rate with up to 4000Hz wireless and 8000Hz wired when used with the correct dongle, which is sold set. oh wait, it's actually included. There's a few extra surprises as well. You obviously have the dongle itself, which can be slotted into the underside of the mouse for storage. It has a dongle adapter, which has a little clip on it so it can go on your mouse pad and the increased polling rate dongle. Personally, I think is a good option to have these included. It puts pressure on the competition and makes this mouse look a lot better. First though, we must get to one of the make or break points that I mentioned earlier, and that is the optical switches. You might be wondering why it's a make or break point. There are obvious benefits of optical switches, the main one being the consistency and eliminating most of the faults that came with mechanical switches, like double clicking for example. However, a downside of optical switches, to me at least, is the feel of them. Mechanical switches were at their peak before the rapid intake of optical. They felt amazing with a load of different varieties and it also allowed people to swap as long as it had the three pins. In fact, the original Keras had a unique feature and that was hot swappable switches so there was no need to get out the soldering iron. On the Keras you remove the rubber covers, the screws and the switches could literally be pulled out and replaced with whatever your preference was. This feature is not on the Keras 2 as most companies have swapped to optical switches some of which are made by different manufacturers they have different pin setups making such a feature now impossible. I've opened up the mouse to take a peek to see who make these they are Asus ROG branded however I decided to attempt to give myself some reviewer integrity and do some research. By matching the connectors on the bottom of the ROG switch, it looks to be using the same type that Ratio Opticals are using. So I'd assume that these are made in collaboration between the two companies. I'll go into what I think of these with my verdict and a small disclaimer, as my opinion might not be something to worry about. Before that, it's time to look at the shape. To most, this would look similar to other classic ergo mice we see these days, like the X-Lite V3, EC2CW, to name a few. The shape of this mouse is actually strange though. If you go by ELO shapes, you probably think that they are very similar, but with ELO shapes, the details are completely lost. I'd call this an ergo-ish mouse. There's a few differences that make this a more accommodating mouse for all grip types. Everything is a little bit more angular when compared to other ergo shapes. Despite that, it remains very comfortable. However, there is another worrying downside to this mouse, especially if you get the white version. The coating for this is very similar to Razer's coarse matte texture that they used on the Death Adder V3 Pro and the Viper V2 Pro. This does mean that the coating is quite abrasive and combined with the color white, the dirt does show up rather quickly. Just like the Harp Ace, they've kept the engravings on the sides as well. With the coating being one of the grippiest available, there's literally no need for this to be here. And again, I personally hate this stuff because it just collects a lot of dirt. 
Jump scare warning, armory crate. I've heard of something called armory crate gear, which is meant to be a bare bones version just to make some changes to your mouse. Unfortunately, it looks like it only supports two products and neither of them is the Keras 2. Thankfully, you can make changes to DPI, polling rate, etc. on the mouse itself. But if you want to make further changes, you'll have to install this abomination to peripheral software. To be fair, their software is for more than just mice. It's for all their products, really but it still sucks. But also moused moss. <laughs> but most mouse software sucks anyway. So they're in good company, I guess. But now we get to the real meat and gravy of the video. My opinion and the price. The Keras 2 features many hits and some misses. As a package, this mouse ticks a lot of boxes. It comes with increased polling rate support. You get impressive battery life that I think can rival Logitech's, and you also get one of the lightest ergo mice on the market, with it weighing just 54 grams. Not only that, you get some pretty great build quality as well, with the mouse feeling very well made, with the side buttons being some of the best I've used, and a perfect scroll wheel, with it being very easy to scroll through, and the mouse three click feels great as well. The shape also started to impress me the longer I used it. I feel this mouse really excels for those that use a more relaxed grip type, whether that being a fingertip, claw or palm grip. Your hand just sits on this mouse and feels comfortable no matter how you hold it, and combined with the 54 gram weight it's really effortless to move around the mouse pad while still keeping a lot of control. The switches don't feel as nice as the Omron Opticals or other mechanical ones, but I'm being picky here. I don't notice the slight lack of quality when I'm actually in game, it's something that I could get used to. These just don't feel as nice as some of the best switches available, that's all. The next downside I think is more of a bigger deal, the coating I think is just a big miss here. There's evidence to suggest that people don't like these coarse matte coatings as much, with Razer moving away from it themselves and there being very few mice using this type of coating in the first place. I'd suggest at least don't get the white version, you can already see a bit of discoloration from my couple of weeks of use, and yes I do wash my hands. Now we get to the price. This costs around $159.99, which puts it into the premium category. Performance in gaming mice has peaked, and improvements here are often incredibly small. As an example, some of the numbers that Asus ROG provided, which showed their click latency versus the competition, gave at most a 0.10 millisecond improvement. The difference between most performance improvements are so minor that you're not going to notice them. Are these 0.10 milliseconds of latency reductions worth $160? The other part as well is that at this price point, the mouse outside of performance has to be flawless. Great switches, coating, scroll wheel, build quality, all of it has to be the best. With the choices of switches and coating they've gone for, it's missed the mark a bit. Smaller manufacturers offer mice that are cheaper with similar performance and in some cases, some of the best quality I've experienced. The amount of money that some of the biggest manufacturers are asking for for their gaming mice is just too much. This isn't a bad mouse, I've enjoyed using it, I've been playing well with it, and I would like to recommend it. But with the price it's currently set at, I don't think you should buy it. If this was maybe around $20 cheaper, I'd say it would be a good option, but $160 is just too expensive. If you want to check out a review of a mouse that I think is worth the money, well there's a video on screen now. Watch it.